info uh, talking about the uh, the MS ITM program, the, the Master of Science in Information Technology and Management. And, and this webinar is a, a little bit special in, in that we're going to focus on uh, course registration, so registering for classes for the fall semester. So I'll start off with some, some introductions uh, before we move forward. Uh, my name is Mark Thuin. I'm the director of the program. And I have with us today several very important people who are going to be uh, helping uh, run this session. So I'll let them introduce themselves. So, so Donna, do you want to go ahead and go next? Sure, I'm Donna. I'm the program specialist for the MSITM program here at UTD. I've been doing this for almost three years now. Sometimes it seems like a lot longer, sometimes it seems like a lot shorter. It's kind of hard to say. Um, I'm always here, happy to help answer any questions that you guys may have about the program, UTD, and what's going on. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Donna. Anisha, do you want to go ahead and go next? Sure. Yeah, firstly, good morning, good evening to everybody on the call. Um, it's really great to have this opportunity to do this. Um, I am Anisha. This is my third semester at. Um, UTD with the ITM program. I'm currently also serving as the vice president for the Student Leadership Council of ITM. So we all are here to help you with any questions that you have, anything that you need. You can find us on LinkedIn or on the web page of the ITM um, Student Leadership Council. So just go ahead and if you want to talk to us, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help. Yeah, and we actually have. So so thank you, Anisha, right? And, and I'll just mention kind of quickly that we have a, a, a group um, in the School of Management uh, called the ITM Student Leadership Council. And uh, the council, on the council, we have senior students, leaders in the ITM program. And uh, as Anisha said, she's the vice president. And we also have several other members uh, with us here today. And, and I'll let them say hello as well and introduce themselves in, in just a moment. But, but one of the nice things about this call, about this registration webinar, right, is you're gonna get a variety of perspectives, right? You'll get my perspective, you'll get Donna's, and you're also gonna get uh, some senior students in the program. So about a year ago, you know, give or take, um, these senior students were where you are today, right? So they were looking at joining a program, they uh, attended probably this very same webinar uh 18 months or so ago so um i'll, I'll just go ahead I, I i know we're expecting maybe four or five other people from the slc student leadership council so just go ahead and introduce yourselves please i think um Adimita, you can start okay hi good morning and good evening everyone so yeah, my name is Arimita and I am currently doing my MS in ITM and this is my second last semester here and we are very happy to help all the prospective students because personally I got so much help from this SLC when I was a prospective student. So yeah, good to see you all. Thank you. Al Omal, you can go next. Hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, greetings to everyone out there. I'm Amol Pise. Uh, second, uh, this is my second term at the UTD Enter ITM program. Uh, uh, this is my first term with the Student Leadership Council as well. And as my colleagues uh, Aramita and all spoke, like we also were at the same position as you are, uh, having lots of questions, and we are happy to help you here. Feel free to reach out to us, uh, email us, maybe on LinkedIn and all the other social media. We're happy to help you. Thanks. Shomi, you can go next. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shomi. This is my first semester, so I think most of the students and I will be able to relate with you all more because it was just October or November when I also attended the same sessions and uh, uh, by God's case, I am in uh, SLC team. So do use our platform. Uh, we have multiple uh, various ways where we can obviously understand your pain and you can obviously con connect with us and we can try to assist as far as we can. 
um, have a good time in this connect. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I turn, turn it back to you, Professor Duan. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So I do have a, a PowerPoint presentation. I was going to go through a, a few slides that I prepared. I, I think this will provide a nice introduction and, and also uh, just kind of talk about some, some important um, aspects of the program itself. Uh, it's not exactly what I want either. I'll just leave it like this. This is fine for now. And, and so um, you're joining, right, a top program in the country. The MSITM program is number 12 in the U.S. based on the 2022 U.S. News and World Report. That is up one from last year and up five from two years ago. The IS, the Information Systems Research Faculty at UT Dallas, are the most productive in the world, uh, looking at uh, their contributions to top IS journals from 2019 to 2022. One thing that we keep very close tabs on and uh, we monitor uh, very closely is the uh, ability of our students to find jobs and find good paying jobs. So when we look at our job placement success rate, um, this is from, uh, it's going to be from uh, uh, spring of 22. Uh, the, we had a, an 80% placement rate within three months of graduation. So that means 80% uh, of our students had a full-time job within three months of graduation, right? And their max, the max salary of a, a student from that class uh, was 242000 and then the average first year compensation was just under a hundred thousand dollars, right? And and so this is you know as a, a graduate program in a business school, most of our students are enrolled in order to advance their career and or you know get a great job, and and we recognize that, right? And and so we uh, the things we do in the program, the courses we have in the program, the structure of the program is such that. Uh, it's aligned very closely with the needs of industry, right? And and that this is evidence that shows uh, just how good we're doing at preparing our students for the job market. All right. Um, you can read more about uh, UTD MSITM um, and our students if you type in the following hashtag on LinkedIn. So that's just hashtag UTD uh, MSITM. And uh, you'll get literally uh, hundreds of, of profiles, hundreds of posts uh, from our students. You can see what they're up to, see what where they're working, uh, what they're doing, uh, and so on. So hashtag UTD MSITM, just put that in the search box uh, on LinkedIn. And then we talked a little bit as well about um, our Student Leadership Council. Right, so you can go to this is just our public web page, right? So we have an MSITM web page, and on the web page, there's a link for the Leadership Council, right? And you can uh, view everyone on our Leadership Council. You can read a little bit about them, uh, why they decided to join the program, uh, what they're interested in doing as they move forward, and you also have the ability to uh, to reach out and either connect with them through LinkedIn, right? So I think everybody now, not everybody, almost everybody has their LinkedIn profile uh, on their page, right? And so uh, that's just a kind of a really nice way to, you know, to connect with people, to get to know people uh, and so on. So it's um, uh, all of our SLC members, Student Leadership Council members are, are very approachable, right? So, so they are, you know, very willing to, uh, you know, answer questions you might have, right? So again, uh, feel free to reach out to them if you want to. So let's go back to uh, my presentation. Um, so uh, most of you on the call today are thinking about starting your courses at UTD in August of 2023, right? So that's the, the fall semester, okay? And and so that's that's what I'm assuming, and and that's where we're coming from when we talk about registration, and and so uh, at UTD we allow our students to actually register for classes alongside our currently enrolled students, 
So new students have the ability to register for classes um, the same week as our currently enrolled students. So next week, beginning April 3rd, if you have been admitted to the MSITM program, right? you will have the ability to actually pick your courses for the fall semester. And, and we actually recommend doing that, right? We recommend that you pick your courses as soon as you, you are able to um, and, and don't wait. And so that's what uh, you know this webinar is, is going to go through. We're going to provide some advice on what courses you should pick, right? And, and also just uh, review the curriculum itself and provide some uh, overall uh, guidelines for what courses you might take as you move forward in the program. So the, the first step I'm recommending or we recommend is, is that you review the registration videos. And, and so um, Donna, uh, I think is I'll probably already put all of these links uh, in the chat window, and these are super, super useful. Uh, they're just extremely helpful. This, this first link will take you to um, just a series of short videos. Most of the videos are you know, 30 seconds, a minute, you know, they're not very long, but they, they get you to the information you need and they talk about the most important aspects of, of what you need to do to register. So, right, the first uh, set of videos talks about the academic calendar. Very important to, to be familiar with the academic calendar. It's on our website. Um, it has many important dates that you'll want to be familiar with. I've opened up a copy of it here as well. So it talks about when classes start, right? So the fall term begins uh, August 21st. If you're an international student studying on an F1 visa, uh, the earliest you can arrive is 30 days prior uh, to uh, August 21st, right? And then the, the last day you can arrive is um, we like to say one week after the cl after classes start, but obviously you want to get here uh, before classes start, right? So, so just if you know if something comes up for some reason, you get delayed by a week, right? Then you know you can potentially still join, but um, you want to try and get here by August twenty first. Web registration, right? So that's what we're talking about today. Um, your appointment time is um, now available through Orion, right? And as I mentioned before, uh, the appointment times are spread over uh, the week of April 3rd. And, and the way appointment times are set is that um, senior students get earlier appointment times, right? So based on the number of credit hours you completed, um, you're going to be given an appointment time and our senior students uh, will be getting slots on you know, April 3rd or April 4th, for example, right? And then newer students will get an appointment time later in the week, maybe April 6th or 7th. And each person has an appointment time in Orion. And you should check that. You can check that right now. And that is the designated time when you can go, when you can first go online and register for classes. So um, let me go back to the PowerPoint, sorry. And um, actually, let me go back here and here. Right, so that's this uh, this second piece, right? Logging into Galaxy, uh, finding your enrollment time. You can see exactly where to go and to do that. Um, while you log into Galaxy as well, uh, you should check to see if you have any holds on your account. Um, holds may be on your account for a variety of reasons, and sometimes a, a hold will prevent you from registering. Uh, as new students uh, for this uh, for this next week, uh, we have uh, removed, we should have removed all of your holds, right? If you still have a hold, let us know. Uh, we can help you get that resolved uh, so that you can register for classes. Um, the hold, if it's on there, will just be temporarily removed to let you register for classes. And then after it's removed, um, it'll be added back and you'll have to actually address whatever that hold might be. You know, a hold could be uh, something like a, a TB test, right? Uh, making sure that you have a, a TB test on file and that you're, you're negative for TB, right? That's, that's a, an example of a hold is, is uh, uh, when we don't have the TB test results yet for you, right? We'll put a hold on your account and that 
hold will prevent you from registering for classes in the future. Again, for this period of time for next week, you will be able to register. All right. Um, update your degree plan, research your courses and course lookup. Again, short videos, about a minute or each. Uh, this is your step number one, right? Is to go through all the videos you see listed here uh, and so on. OK, um, this is kind of getting at the how to the mechanics side of things, right? So how to log into our systems, how to navigate the different screens in our systems, right? How to find the information uh, you need uh, in order to register. OK, so. Um, uh, OK, so that's this first link here. Um, the second item I wanted to just briefly mention, it's a very useful link and and Donna, if you could put that in the chat window as well, it's called course book. And just this URL at the top um, is, is very helpful. It's a public publicly available URL, coursebook.utdallas.edu. And if you open it up, it's going to take you to a kind of a Google like uh, search interface of our schedule. And so here, if I just click on class search at the top, right, um, do a search on MIS for fall 2023. It's going to give me all of the MIS classes uh, for uh, for us for fall 2023. And so this list is is live, right? And and so this list is showing us um, every class that we're offering this upcoming fall. So uh, beginning in August, these classes will be taught. And so this is just kind of a quick way for you to look at the courses we're offering and when they're being offered. The official system for registering for classes is going to be Orion and you're going to get to it through Galaxy. OK, so that's a, a separate system. Um, when you actually want to register for classes, you're going to have to go through Orion, but this is kind of a, a nice quick interface uh, to kind of um, uh, see everything at a glance and browse everything at a glance. Right, so you can see, OK, we have a systems analysis and project management class. Um, MIS 6308 is the course number, right? It has a 0 W1 suffix. Anytime you see a W in the suffix, it means it's an asynchronous online class, right? So it has no meeting room in this particular case. That means it's online, right? You see the description of the class as well. Um, the syllabus, if it's been posted, will show up on the syllabus tab, textbooks, evaluation, right? Instructor CV. Um, will also show up here as well. OK, so. Um, I guess classroom courses, courses that are offered in the classroom have a meeting time and meeting location. So this one uh, is same class, MIS 6308. It's offered Mondays and Wednesdays from 8.30 a.m. to 9.45 p.m. And it's going to be taught in uh, JSOM, the Jindal School of Management building, uh, 2.106 is the room number. OK, so again, um, you can actually you know, see a little map of, of you know, where the room is located in JSOM. So it's going to be the second floor and it's this you know, room that's highlighted in yellow. Um, and so you, know, you can scroll down this list and, and see all the different sections we're offering. And, and we have a total of 96 sections uh, on, on our fall schedule so far. Right, so things like BA with R, Agile Project Management, Supply Chain Software, CRM with Salesforce, you know, just on and on and on, right? And and so um, this is again a, a really nice way to browse the schedule. You can get to the same information in Orion, but it's um, a little bit slower uh, to navigate and and to browse. And there's also some additional information here. So let me ask uh, some some of our SLC members. So, um, how do you use Coursebook? So, so uh, does someone want to talk about what's your uh, just one of your favorite features, or, or what you do with Coursebook, or how you might use Coursebook? Yeah, maybe I can go with that. I've been using Coursebook um, for myself, and then also suggesting it to uh, students who come for advice or who want to look at uh, what what is available for this semester. So definitely it's very easy to use. It's very convenient. 
Uh, if you look at the catalog, know the number, you can search it with that. You, if you know the faculty name, you can search it with that. If you have something in mind about the course, you can search it with the name, so it's super easy. Um, also, you can find um, the instructor CV. That way you can go on LinkedIn, check uh, details on the instructor if you want to. Uh, you have the class details like Professor mentioned, so that's really helpful. Um, sometimes you might not find the syllabus for your specific semester. The recommendation would be just go to the previous semester and check the syllabus. Uh, it won't change a whole lot, but you'll still get an idea of what's taught for the course. So that's that's extremely helpful. Yeah, so that's right. That's a good point, right? All I did was change to this current semester, right? And when you change to the current semester, you will be able to see uh, the syllabus for the course. And, and you know, syllabi do get updated every semester, but, uh, you know, a lot of times the, the changes and updates are, are fairly minor. So there's a good chance the fall 23 syllabus will be very similar to, you know, the spring 23. And again, it depends. Sometimes there are major updates to classes. Uh, sometimes there aren't. And, and so it just kind of depends. But but again, this is a, you know, a good resource, good place to go look. Uh, and, you know, as Anisha said, you can also view uh, the CVs, uh, the resumes of all of our faculty as well. OK, the academic calendar. Uh, very important uh, link as well. Um, I already have opened it up uh, and talked about a couple of items listed here, right? So it has the date when classes start, the date when classes finish, uh, final exam period, uh, the last day of the semester, um, any periods of time when the university is closed. So here we're closed for Labor Day um, and Thanksgiving, and there is no winter break. Um, so um, very useful, very important to get to know the academic calendar. You know, it usually has a page two, but this time I'm not seeing my page two. Page two of the academic calendar usually has information about payment um, and uh, information from the bursar about payment. So uh, that those details may not be available yet for fall, which is why they haven't been posted. Uh, but they are available. It's not summer. available yet for fall. They should be posting it within the next month or so is the information we were given at yeah. the other webinar from the graduate dean's office and advising. So the second page will be posted for fall. Just not quite yet. All right, perfect, perfect, right? So it's going to have um, uh, important information as well. So you'll want to make you make sure you take a look at it and it's, it's just, you know, part of the academic calendar document. So let's go ahead and, and continue on and, and um, you know, again, uh, some important dates. Uh, the schedule for fall is, is live now. You can actually take a look at it and browse it to see what's being offered and when it's being offered. Registration begins the week of April 3rd. So that's this upcoming Monday, right? Uh, registration will open up. And you have a specific registration appointment, and it's going to be for some time during the week of April 3rd, right? And that's the earliest you can register for classes. And we recommend everyone register for classes as soon as you can. So as soon as your registration appointment goes, you know, becomes active, that's when you should register for classes. And you can get to your registration appointment in Orion, right? That was one of the videos we saw earlier. All right. Uh, just want to give a uh, kind of a, a shout out and an announcement. We have a um, an advising pod taking place Friday, so tomorrow, March 31st. This is specifically for new students, and and this is um, in addition to the event we're having today, right? So so the this uh, particular advising pod is a a chance to maybe. Um, ask some additional questions uh, in, in more detail uh, to someone and, and get some advice about you specifically and what classes you might want to take. So go ahead and you know scan this code uh, to get the link. Uh, it's going to be at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we will have several members of our Student Leadership Council uh, present and available uh, during the advising pods to help answer questions. All right. And I, I also want to mention uh, Donna is going to be available immediately after this call for questions as well. 
right? So if you'd like some some one on one uh, advice and support, right? Uh, you have options. Yeah, I, I did book some extra time after this meeting, assuming that you guys would need some extra questions. So I'm willing to stay on for another hour or so if you have questions immediately following this webinar. Perfect. Yeah, and those those questions again are going to be individual one on one. You get to ask questions based on you know your needs and, and what you want to try and accomplish uh, as you move through the program. So looking at the profile of, of our students, uh, our student body. So these are just master's students in information technology and management, right? So our most recent incoming fall class, we had about 54% men, 46% women. You can see the, the numbers over the past four fall semesters, right? It, it's a pretty even split between men and women, slightly more men. Um, and then test scores, right? Average GRE, uh, I need to move that out of the way just a little bit. Fall 2022, the average GRE of our enrolled students was 309. Um, quantitative score average is 160. Verbal score average is 149. These numbers have gone up a little bit, right? And then these are the percentiles. So 70th, 70th percentile for quant, 39th percentile for verbal. So, so this is, these, again, these are averages. Some have you know, higher, some have lower, right? Um, uh, but th these are the averages we have. And so these are impressive numbers. These are good numbers, right? When you look at our school, look at our program, we're attracting top students from all across and all around the world. So I'm, I'm very proud of our uh, ability to do that and, and uh, uh, our ability to connect with people in a meaningful way. So let's talk about the degree requirements. So to earn the MSITM degree, you need to complete 12 free credit hour courses, okay? Um, you need to complete six core courses, and you also need to complete six elective courses. All right, so we're going to take a look at each one of these and, and go through these in detail. The six core courses are evenly split between three business core and three IT foundation. Um, the business core classes, uh, you have flexibility, and, and that's actually a common theme you're going to see throughout uh, our conversation today. The ITM program has a tremendous amount of flexibility uh, in terms of allowing you to choose a path that best meets your needs. So you'll be able to pick wow. business core classes that are aligned with your interests, right? And we'll see what those look like specifically. So core degree requirements, three business core, three IT foundation. The IT foundation classes are systems analysis and project management. Everybody has to take it. Then you have a choice for programming. You can take either Java or Python. Actually, that choice is going away. Uh, we're no longer going to be offering Java. Um, if you want to take programming, the only choice will be Python. Uh, but you still will have a choice uh, with data management. So everyone is required to take a data management class. And you can take either uh, traditional, relational, transactional SQL uh, database management, or you can take data management for analytics, uh, which covers, uh, which also covers uh, NoSQL and uh, other types of data besides transactional data and traditional relational data management. So the the IT core, the IT foundation, right? Um, analysis, systems analysis and project management, and OOP, object-oriented programming, and a, a data management class of some type. That's a, that's a foundation. Uh, we can actually click on the link here, and I'm sure Donna's already probably put this in the chat window or someone has, right? And you'll get the details uh, of the curriculum and of the program as well. And so again, core courses, um, uh, you'll see in our, our course catalog, we, we often refer to things by credit hours instead of number of courses. Uh, almost all of our courses are three credit hours. So when you see, you know, core courses, 18 semester credit hours, that means you, know, you take the 18 divide by three and you're going to take six core courses. All right. And then we see the core courses themselves, the IT foundation, programming, data management, systems analysis. OK. And then the business core we haven't yet talked about, so I do want to spend maybe just a couple of minutes talking about the business core classes. And so um, 
we have a, a large number of courses to choose from. And, and the way this is, is structured is you, you have to pick uh, one course, at least one course from three different academic areas or three different functional areas, right? So the, the functional areas or academic areas are, are the uh, are highlighted in, in bold font or bold text that we see listed here. And uh, in each academic area or functional area, you ha typically have a choice of uh, classes, right? So, uh, for example, if you wanted to take a business core class in statistics, right, you have a choice of either statistics and data an analysis, OPRE 6301, or advanced stats for data science, OPRE 6359. Right. And, and, you know, either one of those counts towards your uh, statistics business core requirement. All right. And then um, you would have to take if you take, say, advanced stats, then you would have to take classes from uh, at least two other functional areas. So maybe you take a, a class from marketing, right? And you have a choice of four or maybe you take a class from economics. For economics, you only have one choice. Maybe you take a class uh, in strategy, right? And we see the two choices listed here for strategy. So again, there's a lot of flexibility. I will say, if you are interested in, in analytics, and we have a lot of ITM students interested in analytics and data science, right? If you are interested in analytics, you should take advanced stats in your first semester. Advanced stats is, is a prereq and or co-rec um, for a number of analytics related elective courses. OK, so in order to take those analytics elective courses, uh, you're going to want to take this class early on. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, it, it is a choice. Um, you can only count one of these two classes towards your degree. This, this is kind of a unique situation. So if you take OPRE 6301, you will not have the opportunity to take OPRE 6359 uh, and count both towards your degree, right? So sometimes we'll get a question, well, can I take both, right? And, and the answer there is, is no, uh, for the most part, right? So uh, you'll want to think about which one to take and, and make that choice and, and uh, do so in your first semester. Um, so again, three courses uh, from three different functional areas, uh, and that's what your business core will consist of. Elective courses. The elective courses we have are broken out into tracks. Tracks are areas of specialization within the world of information systems and IT and management. All right, so I'm actually going to go back to the slide and, and uh, talk about um, the elective course requirements. So. Um, you're required to take six elective courses. Uh, of those elective courses, at least four must be MIS courses. Um, and uh, you have the option also for two free electives. Free electives, that's not referring to the cost of the course, right? It means you're free to take any course in the School of Management. So let's say um, you take an, an accounting class and you really love accounting and you want to take a follow on accounting class beyond the accounting for managers class, right? You can do so and count it as an elective towards your degree. Specifically, it's going to count as a free elective. Now, you know, maybe you love entrepreneurship. Uh, after taking the introductory class on innovation and entrepreneurship, you want to take an elective, an additional elective, right? You can do so. And so everyone gets up to two free electives. And free electives, by the way, can also be additional MIS courses. So, so maybe you just want to, you know, go deep into a specific area uh, in, in uh, you know, in the ITM degree. Uh, that's that's OK as well. All right, so um, this is a, a slide of our business core classes. So again, you must take three uh, classes, at least three classes total, and they must be taken from three different areas. The areas are highlighted in, you know, they have the bold text. All right. IT foundation, we already went through this. Programming, data management, systems analysis. Um, I will mention if you have 
uh, an undergraduate degree in computer science or um, as an undergraduate student, you completed programming and or data management, you have the ability to waive uh, programming and or data management. Now, the way to waive a class is to fill out a form and provide us a copy of your undergraduate transcript. Uh, for the course waiver to be approved, uh, you must have a B or better in the class, and it must have been taken within the past six years. OK, when you waive a class, you're not getting course credit for it, but what you are allowed to do is replace that course with a different or higher level elective of your choosing, right? So, so maybe you took programming in Python in, in college and as an undergraduate, right? You got your B plus, whatever the grade happens to be. And uh, you, you don't want to do programming anymore. You don't want to take that class again, right? So you would submit a waiver. We would review that waiver and approve it, um, you know, based on our criteria. And, and then instead of taking Python, you could take you know, any class you wanted to with an MIS prefix. So maybe you want to take cloud computing, or maybe you want to take agile project management, or maybe you want to take uh, foundations of digital product management or ERP or CRM, right? You, you, you can do that, right? You have a choice. So, so think about that fairly early on, right? Think about that now and decide whether or not you want to waive uh, one of our foundation courses, right? Um, the ITM tracks. So the elective courses, for the most part, are divided and split into the following seven tracks. So these are, you know, different areas within the world of IT. These are different areas uh, of specialization. So the first track, or, or these aren't really numbered in order. Uh, they're just here on a list. There isn't one, you know, that's better than the others, right? Uh, so. Um, when I say first track, I'm just referring to its position on this page, right? I'm not saying it's the number one track or the best track, right? Um, I will say it uh, that the one listed first on this page probably is the most popular track uh, in ITM, and and it's business intelligence and analytics, right? And and so we'll take a look at the courses in it in just a moment, but these seven uh, items listed on this page represent uh, opportunities to specialize. So maybe you love cybersecurity and you want to go deep in cybersecurity, right? We have a track in cybersecurity management that allows you to do that. Maybe you want to focus on SAP. You've been working with SAP all your life, right? We have a track on enterprise systems uh, that will help you do that. We also have tracks on IT consulting and services management, healthcare systems, digital product management, and cloud computing. So uh, looking at one of our tracks, right? So this is the analytics track. Um, each item you see listed here is a semester long course, is a three credit hour semester long course, right? So each bullet point represents a separate semester long course uh, in the ITM program. So any one of these you see listed can be used to satisfy one of your you know, ITM electives uh, towards your ITM degree, right? You know, we, we are um, bigger than many programs and, and our size is, is uh, an advantage in many ways in that we're able to offer just uh, an, a very impressive number of electives and, and uh, also offer electives in a wide variety of areas, right? So, you know, you only have six elective courses. Um, it's actually not possible for you to take each and every one of our electives in the analytics track, right? Um, you know, if you waive two foundation classes, you could take up to eight. But again, that's only about half of the courses we offer um, in the analytics track. So you get to pick and choose. Again, maybe you love uh, SAS or R, right? Maybe you want to work on uh, being, um, being a data engin engineer. So you might take data warehousing, uh, big data, advanced big data, right? Uh, and cloud computing. Um, that's on a separate page, but anyway, uh, you, you have flexibility. You have a choice here. All right, cybersecurity. Uh, we have five different courses that are offered. Digital product management. Uh, this is one of our newer tracks. I'm very excited about it. Um, it's uh, 
we're one of the few schools in the country that are offering uh, a track in product management. So if you're interested in being a product owner or a product manager, right, this track in particular is designed to help those that want to do that uh, and, and want to launch their career in it, right? So data biz, user experience design, agile project management, foundations of product management, so on and so forth. Again, these are each semester long classes, three credit hour semester long classes. Enterprise systems, uh, we are an SAP University Alliance member and have been so for uh, the past 20 years or so. And what that means is in each one of the classes um, or for SAP, uh, you'll have a chance to work hands on uh, with the SAP software, right? So when you take uh, supply chain software with SAP, you're going to be working with the materials management module uh, in SAP, for example, right? Um, IT consulting, again, you see the, the uh, the courses in this track, each bullet point is a semester long course. Uh, healthcare systems, uh, same idea. I know I'm going pretty fast through that, uh, but there is a link to the website which has all that information. And, you know, all right, so, so this is where I get to my uh, kind of the advice section on, on what to do and what courses to take. And um, you should begin with the end in mind, right? So identify your target career path. You know, if you know you want to be a data analyst, great. If you know you want to work with SAP, great. I love it, right? Um, that's going to help you decide what courses you want to take as you move forward in, in the program, right? If you know you want to work in cybersecurity, fantastic, right? That's your targeted career path. So th the tracks, for the most part, are associated with different career paths. Um, and uh, you have the option, you have the flexibility to be um, a specialist or to be more of a generalist. And what I mean by that is, you know, as a student, as you move through the program, you can take all of your electives in a single track and specialize, right? Or, you know, maybe you, you want to be more of a generalist. So, so for consultants, it's often very useful to have a little bit of breadth of knowledge. So maybe you take one elective from you know six different tracks right and that's okay you can do that tracks are not required you're not required to complete a certain number of classes in a track uh, you also have the option maybe to to specialize in two tracks so maybe you want to specialize in you know analytics and cybersecurity. all right you can do that right the option is yours all right so um your first semester if you plan, you have a choice. Your first choice is how many courses do you want to take? Do you want to take three courses or four courses? All right, so that's nine credit hours or 12 credit hours. Um, if you plan, and, and I'll say this, it's about 60% of our new students take three courses, 40% take four courses in their first semester. All right, so that's um, nine or 12 credit hours. Um, your first semester, if you plan to take three, I recommend taking a business core class, right? So most likely statistics um, or advanced statistics, right? I think that's a very good choice for just about everybody. Um, I also recommend taking with that one business core an IT foundation. Um, if you're new to the world of IT and management, I recommend taking data management first, either data management for analytics or data management, uh, just uh, database management systems, right? Either one of those are fine. And then for your third class, right, you'll take an MIS selective from a track of, in your area of interest. So if it's product management, boom, take a track in product management, or take a course in product in the product management track. If it's cyber, if it's you know healthcare, if it's SAP, if it's right uh, analytics, whatever the case might be, you know, take a course, take an elective course in that track. All right. And then in your first semester, we, we require everyone to take a one credit hour professional development course. So, so I'm not counting that as part of the three or the four. It's a one credit hour course. It'll only last half a semester. It meets about, I don't know, seven times for about two hours at a time. Um, and this professional development class is entirely focused on helping you 
get connected with and plugged into the U.S. job market and to help prepare you to find a good internship and to find a good job when you graduate. OK, so it, it's I think one of the most important classes you're going to take um, in, in, you know, in your career, in your time here at UTD. Uh, it's, you know, every country's uh, job market, every city's job market is, is unique and, and being prepared uh, to, to, you know, effectively look for and, and find internships and jobs is um, uh, very, very useful and helpful. If you plan to take four courses your first semester, it's actually five, right? So it's the one credit hour professional development plus four other courses. I recommend one business core, one IT foundation, and two MIS electives. Okay. So that's a pretty, this is a pretty straightforward approach. And this is something you can do every semester, right? One business core, one IT foundation, and one or two uh, elective courses. All right. Um, Let's actually open it up for some questions. I've been talking a long time, and so uh, let's see what oh, they, questions they, they They've been asking questions. They've been asking questions. That's good. All right. All right. So, <laughs> they didn't wait. They've been asking questions. Um, two things that have come up a lot that I think we should just address so you guys can stop asking. Yes, you can register for classes without having your I-20. So if your I-20 is in yeah. process, you don't have that yet, and your enrollment date comes up, yes, you can register before you have that document. Um, the other one is scholarship decisions. Scholarship decisions are made on a rolling basis. If you applied for a scholarship months ago and you haven't heard anything yet, then it's highly likely that you weren't competitive with that group and you may not be receiving one. Um, final decisions on those are usually made by the early July. But once again, if you've been waiting a long time, there's a very good chance that you were not competitive enough for that. So you may want to consider your other options on that. But they do do those on a rolling basis. As they come in. So that's, yeah, that's where and, we see it on scholarships. Other point about, and one other comment about scholarships, right? And and it is competitive and and Scholarship recipients typically have a GRE and, and it varies, right? But, you know, they typically have a GRE of, you know, 315, 16, 17, 18, right? So if your GRE is kind of well below that, right, I, I'd say your, your, you know, your chances probably aren't all that great. Again, we don't, we look at everything when we look at a scholarship application, but, you know, that, that average score or the scholarship recipient is in, you know, somewhere in that range. Okay. It, it's a very, it's a very competitive process, and there are only limited dollars available. Yeah. So I guess you can raise your hand as well if you want to, right? So this little raise your hand, and I'll I'll call on you. Um, I know you've been uh, typing in your questions as well. Uh, but and yeah, one other thing, we are recording this. There will be a recording available. So yes, you will be able to get a recording of this session. All right, so uh, go ahead. Hi, Mark. Um, so I just wanted to ask one thing uh, that in the uh, just now you told that uh, I mean, uh, once if we take the general class, we cannot take the advance or vice versa. Um, so suppose uh, if I am taking an advanced class and how do I know whether I'm prepared for the basic one or not? Or uh, without basic, can we directly jump onto the advanced? I mean, is it recommended? Yeah, so so we don't have any prereqs for the advanced class. It, it's just it's going to move at a faster pace and it's going to go into to more depth, right? And and so um, yeah, you'll have to work hard, but uh, uh, you you won't be at a disadvantage. And and I think we have a few of uh, of our SLC members who probably take in advanced stats. Is anyone on the call taking advanced stats? Maybe not. Oh, you did. So show me. Go ahead. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience with it? Yeah, so advanced stats is actually uh, needed for many of the analytic subjects. So uh, not only analytic subject, I would say in your career, basically, there will be many times that you would need to know many concepts of the statistics. So it is recommendable to take advanced stats. Advanced stats and stats both are in like uh, both are important, but then advanced stats will give you uh, 
possibility to take most of the business analytics and the intelligent subjects, and you'll be able to understand them as well in a better way. Okay. So basically have you found it challenging to keep up with it? So, so just uh, as, as being a student in the class? Um, yeah, like you have to read it on your own <laughs> as well and not completely depend upon the professors. They are there okay. to help you and they are there to obviously guide you in the class, but you should do your own homework. Okay, makes sense. Thank you so much, both of you. All right, great. Rashida, um, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Good morning for me as well. Uh, it's good to see you all again. You too. Uh, so, yeah, my question is just related. Uh, like earlier, you said the first recommendation. It was like three courses, uh, your first semester or four courses, your first semester. If you take either one of them, uh, either one of them, like would it affect our chances of scholarship in the next semester? So, Aramina, yes, you, you want to go ahead and answer that one? Yeah. So I, I would say no, it will not change your uh, scope for taking like getting the scholarship. So if you take nine plus one for the first semester, so one is the mandatory PD and nine is the course credit. So it will be the same. So you can go ahead with either of one. So whichever course load you feel it's good for you. Uh, OK, uh, OK, thank you so much. And one other question, I think it is not related to the course one. Uh, like earlier, we were talking about the TB test. Uh, so it is to be done when we arrive in US. But uh, since I'm already here, can I go it, uh, for it now as well? I Though I'll be starting classes in August. Yeah, you can, right? So so um, we just need a, a record of that on, on file, right? And, and so yes, you can. Take it directly at the UTD Health Center, or I think there are a number of, of other options uh, around the country where you can take it and have the results sent to the UTD Health Center. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, uh, like for enrollment appointment, uh, there were like three things showing for me, like eight week session, uh, uh, first eight week session, second and regular academics. So like which one uh, should we go for? while registering for the classes. Yeah, Donna, do you want to answer that one? Um, most of your courses will be for the full. Semester courses, the 16 week sessions. Um, that's where you will be enrolling for most of them. The registration period for the first eight weeks is the same as for the full semester. The second eight week session does have an additional. Period during which you can register. Um, I believe the professional development course they will be teaching in the two sessions. So you could select a professional development course that starts in the second eight week session. But the vast majority of our classes are only offered for the full 16 week semester. Okay, okay. Yeah, if, if it's a three credit hour class, it's going to be for the full term, the 16 week semester. So the one credit professional development is is an eight week class. Well, actually, we, we've changed it a couple of times, so so um, uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Anyway, uh, your classes will be for the full term semester. Oh, OK, uh, like uh, that uh, compulsory class, that professional development one. So when I was searching for its schedule uh, with the regular uh, academic session, like I wasn't able to find any session for it. So should I search it with the first uh, eight week session or second eight week session? Yeah, let's take a look at that, right? We can we can find that. So um, I'm going to course book. And Donna, how do we find this particular class? Maybe I'll let you you drive for a little bit, right? So which, which class are we looking for? Professional development. MAS 6100. There yeah, we go. Let's see here. Sometimes there we go. That's our internship class. I feel it is uh, 6102. MIS 6102. MIS. Yes. MIS 6102. They have a lot of sessions out there. There are. 
There we go. Okay, I need to search here then. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you the kind of the shorthand way to look at these as well. So, so the suffix here. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so the course number is MAS six one zero two, right? And these are all the different times when professional development is offered. Um, if you see a zero zero one zero five one zero five two, right? The the zero at the beginning. And the five, that's going to be. Um, you, know, you can get the details listed. The zero here, fives right? are the first eight week session. The zero nines are the second eight week session. OK. So if you look at the course numbers that say. For example, section number zero five one, that will take place in the first eight week session. You would start in August and go through beginning of October. If you the section that's 091, that one starts in the October session and goes to the end of the academic year in December. Okay. So they have changed they have changed it the 6102 course. It is an eight week course rather than a full 16 week course. So we can go for either one the first semester uh, first uh, right you, you could go for the first eight weeks or the second eight weeks you could register for either one you just need to take it within your first semester oh, okay uh, that helps a lot uh, I think I was searching it with the wrong MIS it was MAS so thank you so much right <laughs> uh, that uh, that helps a lot thank you so much Okay, and yeah, the dates are listed in, in the details as well. So if you click on the course, right, you can see uh, the dates when the class meets. So this class will finish by October 14th. So that's that's the uh, the first eight weeks. And, you know, as Donna mentioned, um, the suffix here. So after the period, right, uh, there's a way to interpret that as well. All right, so next question. So Sai Krishna, uh, good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, so I have a question regard. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question in terms of like the courses. So there's an ENTP 6375, the technology and new product development, and the MIS 6375, which is also technology and new product development. So what happens if we take like one course? Would the other course be waived or how does that work actually? Um, I mean, they are the same exact them? class, right? So, yeah. so they, they are one in the same class. They are not two separate classes. Uh, we, we sometimes have classes that are called cross-listed classes, yes. right? And uh, when a class is cross-listed, it, it's it's done so uh, so that two different degree programs can can count it towards their degree, right? So so we get to count, you get to count. This class has an MIS elective, right? And students in our innovation and entrepreneurship program get to count it as an ENTP elective, right? So, so um, this course is actually cross-listed with with four different programs: um, our supply chain okay. management, our IT and management, yeah, systems management, and entrepreneurship. So, so it is the same class though. So, so you'll be. You know, if you take this class, it'll meet, you know, on Tuesdays, 4 to 645. OK, so if if we take like the, uh, let's say MIS 6375, so would would the business core requirements change? Do we have to pick another class? Because there are three requirements. I mean, you have to pick three courses. Yeah, right. So that good, good question. So so. Um, when we look at our innovation and entrepreneurship, we see it and, and we see technology and new product development listed as a business core, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also listed as an MIS selective. And so with this particular class, you have a choice. You can either count it as one of your business core if you want to, or you can count it as an MIS selective. Oh, okay, okay. So you have a choice. That's a really good point. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that was my question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. All right. So, uh, Ruchika, Ruchika, good morning. Good 
morning. Yeah. So there is this link that I just sent in the chat. Uh, there's a page on the website which states that F and J visa holders can start enrolling into classes only after having attended the in-person in-person orientation in August. So does that mean that we won't be allowed to register for courses, the one that opens up on April 3rd? No, that's, that's not accurate. What, what that website you're looking at, that's that's just not accurate. You will be able to register beginning the week of uh, April 3rd. OK, so so we started doing things differently maybe three years ago. And, and so um, it looks like we haven't updated all of our all of our websites yet. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's an older page, right? It's talking about summer 2020. So yeah, so anyway, that's not accurate. You'll be able to register next week. Thank you. Yeah. So Benice, good morning. Yeah, hi, good morning, Mark. So for the ratio of the courses, uh, will each one of us get a separate time slot or it will be simultaneously for everyone? Like we can go to the Orient portal and register for the classes. So, so um, Anisha, maybe I'll, I'll let you answer that. So, so I, I think every student's given a, a 15 minute registration time. Um, I'm going to mute everybody and please unmute yourself, Anisha, and, and maybe you can answer that question yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah, it is 15 minutes. And like Professor said, it starts with senior students. So uh, people in the last semester approaching their last semester will get the first chance to register and then uh, there are 15 minute slots allotted to everybody. So you being first semester, you probably will be somewhere around uh, later in the week of April 3rd. So look out for that date on your Galaxy portal under Orion under enrollment appointment and you should see the date and time exactly there. And it's not that you have to enroll that time, but it starts after that. So any time after that time and date, you should be able to enroll. Does that help? Okay, so, yeah, so, so, so date and time will be updated by when in the coming week or? It is already updated, now. so well, yeah. yeah. Log in, like do it, do it like right now, right? So you can find <laughs> sure. it. Yeah. yeah. And like know uh, if you can't find it. Yeah. yeah, sure. I'll check on that. And like uh, after the registration, do I need to pay the fees now or I can pay uh, once I arrive or how it is planned? So, um, so, with... so that, yeah, you can go ahead. No, go ahead. Professor. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying, so that will also be updated on your um, Orion portal. So once you log in under um, payment, you can see what the date for the due date for fees would be. Uh, the fees are updated after you choose all your courses and they are finalized. So depending on the courses you take, how many courses you take, your fees will be updated there with the due date. So once you start seeing that, you will be able to know what exact amount it is and when you need to pay it. OK. Thank you. That was quite helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Hope yeah, to great. see you all in four twenty-three. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. And and uh, thanks for the question. All right. So Pat Blonda, uh, you're up next. Yeah. Good morning. We can't hear you if you're talking, uh, Pat Bondla. Um, I may not be saying that correctly either, but you're on on top of my list here. Let's go ahead and move on then. So, uh, Rashita, good morning. I have uh, already been awarded with uh, a thousand dollar scholarship, uh, but. Uh, there is another point here mentioned like uh, uh, for international students, there is a chance to reduce up to five fifty percent off for the tuition fees for up to two sem consecutive semesters. So uh, will we get any further communication related to that in the coming days or uh, it is a one time communication? I, I couldn't quite hear the second part of your question. Uh, I, I understand you received a scholarship. Congratulations. That's great. And and um, you know, it does 
qualify you for Texas resident tuition rates. So that that is about half of, of the non resident rates and and you get it for two semesters so the fall and the spring semesters. Is uh, the, the communication related to that when you be like uh, when we'll be able to get the remaining part? Do we have to do something about uh, uh, it? Like to maintain so, so be, uh, constant credit hours, uh, uh, and etc. So in your if you receive the scholarship and in, in your award letter, it tells you exactly what the requirements are to continue to receive it. So so and, and also what you need to do in order to accept it. So so just read that email closely and, and make sure you follow the rules um, listed in it. You know, in, in general, once you get the scholarship, like I said, it's going to be good for your first two semesters. Right, that's that there aren't really strings attached to it. Um, you get it for two semesters, but again, you have to follow the rules. There might be somewhere you have to click to go accept it. Um, maybe one or two other things you have to do as well. Yeah, I already accepted the scholarship, but uh, uh, it was only related to that thousand dollars. Well, but, but in the letter, what is it? It, it, it also mentions um, the Texas resident tuition, right? It is mentioned like the scholarship also provides you with in-state tuition rate, uh, which can reduce your tuition by 50%. Other than that, uh, I cannot find anything related to the award. Uh, when will be able to get the award part? It, it shows up. It, it shows up on your account. So, so when you register for classes and and your tuition bill gets generated, it'll get generated right the, the proper way based on your scholarship. So there's no other communication or anything, you, right? So that's that's it says it right there. Uh, other did I answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. OK, thank you. All right, Mohammed. Good morning. Yeah, morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. You guys are doing great. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. My doubt was regarding uh, the internship process. Uh, there's a handshake portal uh, for the UTD college. I have registered under it, but uh, it shows that the college needs to be uh, activate my account for handshake. So I just wanted to clarify the doubt about it. You can't. They will activate your account after you are an enrolled student. Um, and then you can contact the Career Center and they will activate your Handshake account, but you must be a registered student before they can do that. So until you've registered for classes, you won't be able to access Handshake. OK, thank you. That was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, perfect. Ayushi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So uh, I have two questions. Uh, when I go to my enrollment to do list, it shows that provisional bachelor degree certificate, an official copy has been received, but official copy is not received yet. But uh, it's been 20 days and my uh, you know, university from which I did my BTEC, uh, they have already sent the uh, official copy of bachelor degree certificate to the university in UTD. And and uh, uh, they have also received uh, the, an email mentioning that they have received the bachelor degree certificate, but it is not yet uh, updated on the portal. Could you please guide me? Uh, what should I do next to make it uh, sure that they receive it? Donna, do you want to take a shot at that one? Uh, but the portal does not update instantaneously. Um, they have to go through and process and. The email was probably an automatic email saying, yes, thank you for sending. We've received this. Then they'll need to go in and verify it and update the portal. Um, all you can do is just give us some time to update it. I mean, if you want, you can contact the admissions office. You can contact admission at utdallas.edu to verify that it's been received. But it's probably just a case of it's it's been received. The portal just hasn't updated yet. 
okay so i called the admission portal as well so they uh, told me that it takes only 15 days or a week to 15 days to get it updated but it's been uh, already 20 days so i was worried uh, it has not been updated yeah and, and those are average times depending upon oh. how many documents they have um what's yeah. going on if people are out of the office like I said, if someone says yeah, it I takes 15 it. days, that doesn't necessarily mean it takes exactly 15 days. That's probably the um, average time it can take them. So just be a little patient, wait for it to update. Um, if, okay. if it doesn't, then you can always follow up. But if you've received confirmation that they've got it, then it, it will update. It just doesn't do it instantaneously. Oh. I need to be patient. Okay. Uh, there is one more thing I want to ask is that I uh, went to manage my class portal and I can see appointment begins April 6, 2023, 1 45 p.m. So does that mean I uh, got this slot to register for classes, right? You you will be able to register after that date and time. Okay. So you, you don't you don't necessarily have to go on at exactly that time. Um, it's not a, an appointment where you have to do it then. Any time after that, you can you oh. you will be able to register. Okay, okay, thank you so much. I'm so excited to join you today. <laughs> thank you so well, much. Well, welcome. Yeah. Just to add there, that is CST time. So just in case you're looking for doing it as soon as it opens, just make sure you block your calendar according to the CST time zone. Yeah, I make sure of it. I am already in Dallas, so that should not be a problem for me. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So we we have time for maybe one more question. So so uh, uh, Sai Grandi, um, do you want to go ahead and and ask a question? Good morning. Yes. Hi. Hi, Mark. Good morning. Good morning, all. So Mark, my question is similar to uh, the previous one, but it's regarding the scholarship. So I have applied for the scholarship uh, on second of this month. But uh, and I have also, you know, uh, updated my GRE scores in the EPS portal. I have uh, reported there itself, but uh, I'm still getting mails that uh, the score is not being reported for the JSOM scholarship. Uh, I have sent a couple of emails, but I did not get any uh, response. I just got a generic response from uh, the scholarship team. So uh, could you uh, help me with that? So you you sent a new score, right, to to uh, UT Dallas? No, I mean uh, my yeah my original one. I sent it on the second of this month, but it's been more than like three weeks, so uh, and it's not updating on the scholarship portal. Is it is it saying your GRE score is missing or or what? Yes, what's the... yes, yes. Uh, it's showing me that the GRE score is missing, and also I'm getting mails that I have to you know submit my GRE score and all of that. So um, so Donna, I think you have probably the, the email address for this, right? So it, it's JSOM grad scholarships um, and, and yeah, did if, you try sending if, an email? If, you, if, you've already, if you've already sent them an email, you, sending multiple emails on the same subject doesn't help, okay? Um, they answer them in the order they come in and they will get back to you. And it's possible but, if, if you've submitted the scores, they just need to go out and get them. And just just the stuff isn't instantaneous. We have over 10,000 students in JSOM. So sometimes things take a little bit of time and I know that it's frustrating. But if you've already emailed them, you will just need to wait for them to have a response. We don't have access to the scholarship portal we don't have access to that information so you will just need to wait for the scholarship team to get back to you and for the portal to update all right i mean uh it, i have sent a mail like maybe like 10 days back so so that's why i'm reaching out like you know asking the question here right so depending on so, it, so go ahead yeah so did they respond to your email uh, uh, no, no, actually it was like some some sort of a generic uh, template. I mean, it's not a personalized one. It's it's uh, saying that, you know, you'll get uh, admission soon, be patient or something like that. All right. So, so yeah, I, I would just, just like Donna said, if, if they said, please wait, then you should wait. If you ask a specific question, you know, do you have my GRE test score? Um, and And they said, you know, please be patient. We'll let you know if it's missing or something like that, right? 
and and, and I would just uh, follow what they say, right? And 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 uh, the test scores do take a little while to update. Okay, sure, sure. I'll be patient then. Thank you, thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, but there, there also, you know, there is a a kind of a a balance here, right? So so if you don't get a response, I I would say you said March second or beginning of this month, right? It, yes. It, you know, after a month, I, I would I would follow up, right? So April second next week, I would follow up. Sure, okay. sure. I will. I will. Yeah, I will. I'll do that. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, for those that we didn't have time to to get to, right? Uh, I apologize. Um, uh, but we will have Donna will be available. Uh, for the next 45 minutes or so, uh, if you have additional questions, and I am going to put up the uh, the advising pod, right? So uh, we have an advising pod for brand new students. It's tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Okay, so um, you know, take a, a screenshot of this, take a picture of this, whatever, uh, so you can uh, get the link. Uh, it's going to be a, a really uh, kind of useful event to get some additional questions answered about uh, the tracks and the courses and, and the program overall. Um, I'll just close by saying, uh, you know, well, thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning. And, and thank you, Donna, and, and thank you for uh, the members of our SLC for being here this morning as well. Um, you know, I, I think the, the more time you, you spend being around UT Dallas and, and the ITM program, uh, the, obviously the more you're going to know about it, but but also the more impressed you'll be, right? I, I, I love this program. I think we have the best program in the country. Um, we are you know, number 12 in the country and, and our students have just tremendous success when they graduate. And, and to me, that's that's really the sign of of, of you know us and, and the program doing a good job is when our students are able to go on, graduate, move into the workforce, get good jobs, uh, advance their careers. So I, I hope you to see you on campus in the fall. I uh, look forward to seeing each and every one of you in person in the fall. And uh, if you have questions, you can reach out to us uh, as well. I think Donna usually put the uh, contact details uh, in the chat window as well. I, so again, I put them um, all out there, so. Perfect. Yeah, again, thanks everyone and hope you have a, a good rest of the day. Talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you all.